Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. In this section, we're going to be talking about quality and Six Sigma. Up until this point, we've been looking at processes and we've been evaluating them, flow time, looking at metrics, we've been looking at inventory, we've been looking at capacity. But now it's time to think about quality and how we can go about improving all of these processes. So the first question is, what is quality? If you look at the definition from, from the American Society for Quality, it says that it's the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bears on its ability to satisfy stated or implied needs. If you condense that down, it really is the ability of a product or service to meet or exceed customer expectations. That's what quality is. It's in the eye of the customer. So why do we consider quality? Well, quality is associated definitely with the company reputation. The better the quality product, the more likely people will purchase that product. If it's a low quality product, people will shy away from it. If somebody is harmed or injured or worse with a product, then you're subject to liability. And of course, if we're going to deal with global uh, customers, then you want to have a very consistent product that can be used across multiple countries. So what we want to do in terms of quality is we want to manage the process flows. By reducing variation in the process and in the product itself, it improves cost effectiveness. If you recall, the more variation we had in terms of lead times and demand, we had to keep safety stock. When there was variation in a process flow, we had uh, increases in lines, increases in inventory, that caused all sorts of problems. So if we can reduce variation in the process, we will improve our cost effectiveness. There are costs associated with quality, and we look at them from four different perspectives. The first being prevention costs. That is the costs associated with stopping a problem from happening. That's typically design costs, designing of a process to prevent a problem. The second one is considered appraisal costs. This is where if you're thinking about quality inspectors and all the tools associated with checking for problems, that's where appraisal costs come in. An internal failure is when we fail to identify a problem throughout the process, but we still catch it before it goes to the customer. So this could mean um, rework or the cost of making a product that cannot be sold. That's an internal failure. External costs are associated with when the customer finds the problem. And that's the worst because you are dealing with the cost of fixing the situation as well as possibly losing goodwill with a customer who finds a problem in the product. So how do we improve quality? Well, there's an overall quality improvement process, and that's where we measure everything. Recall, everything has to have a metric associated with it to make sure that it's up to standard. We analyze it, we control our processes, and when they're controlled, we try to improve them and possibly redesign. That's the overall quality improvement process. So how do we go about doing this? Well, this is where we'd start talking about Six Sigma. The key to Six Sigma is something called DMAIC, and that stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. If we're going to make any changes to a process, we need to define the problem, measure things so we can collect all of our variables, analyze them, then make our change, which is our improvement, and then control it and monitor it to make sure that the process is now staying in the improved mode. So that's the key to Six Sigma. But how do we actually go about doing that? This is where we talk about the seven tools of quality. They're, most of them are very simple to use, but they're very, very effective. They are check sheets, Pareto charts, histograms, scatter diagrams, Ishikawa, otherwise known as fishbone or cause and effect diagrams, flowcharts, and statistical process control. 
In the next few sessions, we're going to be taking a look at each one of those particular um, tools and see what we can learn from them and how we can use them to improve processes. I'll see you then.